Hi, I'm Don Haver with the real estate firm in the Tri-Cities in the state of Washington. I work with my daughter Michelle, and between the two of us, we form the Haver team. Our market area uh, covers Richland, Kennewick, Pasco, and the West Richland uh, communities within the state of Washington, which is in the southeast part of the state of Washington. Today, we're going to be talking about home selling process and some considerations. As a starting point, what I'd like to indicate is that home selling is not about real estate agents and it's certainly not about real estate companies. In, in essence, what I'm trying to say is that when you invite an agent in to talk with you about whether or not you should be selling your home, what you should not be exposed to is a canned presentation about how great the real estate agent is and how great the company might be as far as the various awards, the length of time in the business, what have you. That's not what real estate is really all about. Real estate should be looked at it from a different point of view. So when someone invites us in to talk about whether or not it's appropriate for them to be selling their home at the present time, what we want to do is approach it from a totally different point of view. And specifically, we want to be focusing on two major factors. The first factor is, what is your situation? Why do you want to sell? You know, what are your goals? The second part of it is we want to make sure that uh, clients are informed as far as about the marketplace and what's going on in the marketplace and how that market may have an impact upon uh, selling their home. And as we put these two factors together, sometimes we find that it's just not in the client's best interest to sell. On other occasions, we find that, yes, it is in their best interest to do so. And every situation is, is an individual situation, of course. So when we take a look at the client situation, what we want to do is we want to sit down with them and, and listen and understand exactly what their needs are. So as a result of identifying the needs, then we can develop a specific answers that might be appropriate to satisfy those needs, and we can look at our resources to determine what tools we have in our tool bag that might also support the needs of the, of the seller. As an example, a hypothetical situation, and I certainly understand everyone's needs are different, but let's say that we have uh, sellers who say that it's important for me to get my home sold, I need the most amount of money and the least amount of time with the fewest amount of hassles because I'm doing a relocation. If I'm looking at a hypothetical situation, and once again I want to emphasize everyone's needs are different, we might be looking at a situation when an individual says I need to get my home sold, is we might talk about how we get qualified buyers into their home. As far as the most amount of money, and there are a variety of reasons why people need money, and of course, one might be that they're close to being upside down and selling their present home, or possibly they need more money to buy a more expensive home on the other end. That gets back to negotiation skills frequently. As far as the least amount of time, marketing has a direct impact upon uh, the amount of time that a home is on the market. As far as the fewest number of hassles, that gets back to experience, communication, and control. And those are factors that the agent should be discussing with a potential client if, in fact, they want to eliminate hassles in the process. And then finally, re relocation itself gets back to knowledge in the present market area and assisting uh, the home seller to procure home at the other end. Now, the other part of the uh, equation is, is what's going on in the marketplace. We want to talk about prices. When we take a look at the Tri-City area for the year of 2011, we know that our area is heavily influenced by the federal budget. And at the time of this recording, you know, Congress is trying to figure out what we're going to do with the current uh, fiscal year plus the, the following year. So, so as we watch that develop, we'll see where that takes us. But we do know that we can monitor supply and demand at the present time. It's very important for us to take a look at supply and demand, and how do we do that? We do that through absorption rates. And this particular chart indicates that if we have one to four months of inventory, that's typically considered to be a seller's market situation, and we're more likely to have a market that's appreciating. And that's been true of our lower end, newer homes uh, within the Tri-City area. Uh, if we have a situation where we have five to six months of inventory, uh, frequently that's classified as an even or normal market situation, and seven months plus, it's a buyer's market with some depreciation. So I, I did a little analysis uh, on the 1st of March that says, okay, where are we within the Tri-Cities as a whole? And I, what I found is that when we started uh, 1st of March, we had 979 listings available. During the month of February, we sold 157 homes. So if we take a 979 and divide it by 157, this is our quick technique for absorption rates, we come up with uh, 6.23 months of inventory. Now, what does that tell us? So let's go back to that other chart again, and let's review that. 
you can see in the center of the chart here, what we have is a situation of 6.2 months, and so that's considered to be a normal market situation. Personally, I think when we get over 6.5, uh, we, we start to get in a situation where the houses just aren't moving as quickly as we'd like. Uh, if we get up to seven months of inventory, there's no question about it. Uh, uh, we're definitely moving into the, the area where it's more of a buyer's market situation. Now, when someone asks me what's going on in the marketplace, I'll ask them, you know, what part of the market are you referring to? Why? Because what I have found is that we have a segmented market. Part of our market in the Tri-Cities has been appreciating very nicely. Part of our market in the Tri-Cities has been reasonably flat. And part of our market actually has been dropping in value. This all gets back to price ranges. It gets back to neighborhoods and communities. So we have to look at each individual situation and, and go from there. If we look at what's happening from a national perspective, and this is a forecast by Fannie Mae. Fannie Mae is indicating that uh, if we look at the end of 2010 uh, and move forward, the market is dropping uh, during uh, 2011, climbs slightly, and then drops again. And this is probably because Fannie Mae anticipates there's going to be some shadow inventory that comes on the market and some more foreclosures are coming on the market, which is going to cause an oversupply situation nationally. And then as we get towards the first quarter of 2012, the market's going to start to appreciate once again. So we get back to more in alignment with supply and demand. Now, why do we mention the national level? Because we are affected somewhat within the Tri-Cities. Why? Because what I find personally is that uh, we deal a lot in the relocation market. People come to the Tri-Cities with the anticipation of buying a home, but simply cannot because they cannot sell their homes elsewhere. The other factor we have to look at is what role will distressed properties play within our marketplace? When we say distressed properties, we're talking about typically two categories. The first category being uh, where a home seller is upside down. What does that mean? If they're to put their home on the market, the market value of the home is actually less than what they owe on it. We don't see too much of that in the Tri-City area, but we do have to remember there is such a thing as closing costs. And so if someone buys a home and wants to turn around and sell it within a year or two, they possibly could be in an upside down situation. The other factor is d dealing with foreclosures. And of course, people's needs change all the time. And let's say hypothetically someone has lost their employment or maybe they had extensive medical uh, expenditures. This could cause someone uh, not to pay their mortgage in a timely manner and therefore become uh, uh, in a situation where the bank is foreclosed. Now, we don't have a lot of that within the Tri-Cities, but we need to, need to be sensitive. CNBC also said that uh, the shadow inventory of not yet foreclosed homes due uh, to a moratorium will surge within the next year. And it, that little graph that I showed you previously shows about the middle of 2011, where we anticipate that we're going to have the shadow inventory coming on the market. We, once again, we don't have much shadow inventory in the Tri-Cities, but we have to be sensitive to the situation that it may develop here. And we'll always have a, a watchful eye out. We have three different categories or types of sales nationally and also within the Tri-City area. The first is a non-distressed sale, which typically sells at 100% of value. Now, this information is by Realty Track uh, foreclosure of December of 2010. Realty Track says nationally that uh, short sales frequently sell for 81% of, of value and foreclosures at 59%. I'm not sure these statistics are, are really valid within the Tri-City area. What, what I find by definition, a short sale means that someone owes more on the home than what it's currently worth. Well, that means market value. And homes uh, frequently sell for pretty close to, to market value in the Tri-Cities if they're priced properly. Once again, we have very few foreclosure properties, and this particular uh, graph says 59%. My experience has been that many of the foreclosed properties are also abused properties with extensive deferred maintenance. And so by the time you procure them and do the repairs and bring them up to standards, you're probably pretty close to what uh, market value would be anyway. We do have a situation in the Tri-Cities, in my opinion, uh, where the older a home becomes, the less in demand it is, and the more expensive the home becomes, the less in demand it is. So if you take a situation where you have an older home that's more expensive, and let's say over $400,000, that market is pretty soft within the Tri-Cities right now, and it has been for the last year or so. So if we take a situation where someone has their home on, on the market, it's an older home, and it's over $400,000 asking price, and it's sitting out there and just not doing well, 
and likely uh, in a depressed situation. And presently, we have over a year's worth of inventory of older homes that are over $400,000. Those homes are actually falling in value. And I made the assumption that they f a home might uh, fall in value of 5% during 2011. If that is the case, that home will drop $769.23 each and every week. So if you look at it from that perspective, it's incumbent upon the home seller to be realistic in pricing and have an understanding exactly what the home is worth today and what it might be worth six months from now. And that all gets back to understanding absorption rates and, and what's going on in the marketplace. Well, once again, the purpose of this presentation is to indicate that your situation is very, very important and the market is very important. And we have to take a look at those two factors, first of all, to determine not determine whether or not selling is in your best interest, and if so, how we might go about to achieve your goals. I'm Don Haver with a real estate firm in the Tri-Cities in the state of Washington. If you're thinking about selling your home, give us a call at 783-8400 or go to our website at keytohomes.com and send us an email. We'll look forward to talking to you. Thanks for watching.